Hello, I'm Nurse Murphy. Join me in tackling the complete blood cell count with differential. Just as a brief summary, when there is a shift to the left, that is likely a bacterial pathogen and antibiotics may be prescribed. We went over just a general CBC and understand when we are looking at the national exam, the NCLEX questions are designed to have you use your clinical judgment. And you can follow the clinical judgment measurement model steps to first recognize cues, then analyze those cues and help you prioritize a hypothesis. Let's meet our client. The nurse cares for a 75-year-old male with coronary artery disease, hyperlipidemia, gastroesophageal reflux disease, prostate cancer, with a chief complaint of right flank pain and lower back pain. We're provided with lab results and we see a trend on a Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And within the CBC, we see the red blood cell counts. We see the hemoglobins. We see hematocrit. We see the white blood cell count and we see the platelets. On the national exam, they're going to give you the normal ranges and you're going to compare your lab results to how they fare with the normal ranges. On the right screen, you'll get your test question. Complete the following sentence by choosing from the list of drop down options. And we have previously done this, so I'm just going to quickly go through. From review of the CBC lab results, the client is at highest risk for is it gastrointestinal bleed, metabolic alkalosis, oral thrush? As evidenced by the trend in, is it declining hemoglobin, increasing white blood cell count, or stable red blood cells? And as evidenced by the trend in, is it increasing hematocrit percentage, stable white blood cell count, or declining platelets? Our answers are provided here. From the review of the CBC lab results, the client is at highest risk for gastrointestinal bleed, as evidenced by the trend in declining hemoglobin and the trend in declining platelets. I go through the lab um, and test question rationales. So from review of the CBC lab results, client is at highest risk for gastrointestinal bleed. In the setting of anemia, the gastrointestinal tract is at risk for bleeding. Understand that's always a risk. Nurse actions include collection of orthostatic blood pressures, guaiac stools, monitor for complaints of lightheadedness, and place the client on fall precautions. Well, when I wrote those nurse actions, I hope you could envision a nurse care plan for a patient with anemia. In GI bleed, loss of blood volume could trigger compensatory mechanisms, including release of lactic acid, which would result in a metabolic acidosis, not in the answer option of metabolic alkalosis. And then when the blood, white blood cells are low, in a situation when WBC's white blood cells are low, opportunistic infections can set in. And then as evidenced by the trend in declining hemoglobin, hemoglobin decreased from 7.7 .7 down to 7.0. And compared to that reference range of at least 14 for a male, as well as that decline over three days, has you considering declining hemoglobin as an issue. And then as evidenced by the trend in declining platelets for the same reason. Over to the left here, we see a CBC fishbone format. And here, uh, just as a general example, we have 8.5 as a white blood cell count. We have hemoglobin of 7.0. Hematocrit essentially taking that hemoglobin as a general rule of percentage, you know, just multiplying that seven times three. Um, you see it's not exact, but it's, it brings you into that area at least. And then those platelets at 24.3. 24.3, is that a problem? So let's go back to the right again, and I say to you that platelets, AKA, also known as thrombocytes, they prevent excessive bleeding in our body. There is a concern anytime there are our platelet count 
is less than 100,000. And this client is only a quarter of that at 26.9, declining down to 24.3. Again, nursing care plan actions as above that I had mentioned. And then also you wanna prevent even minor, minor traumas like bumping against a side rail. Anytime they have a vena puncture, you'll notice that we need to hold it, put pressure on that site a little longer because of their low platelet count. Now, when we go back to the thoughts of scoring for a test question, anytime you know the number of answers to put in, it's a zero one scoring. So when you know the number of answers, so like there's no point deductions. Um, so here, gastrointestinal bleed would have given you one point, declining hemoglobin and declining platelets would have given you three points total. Uh, that if you got any wrong, you just wouldn't have gotten the point, uh, but you would never have a point taken away. Now bringing us on or progressing on to the thought of CBC with differential, that's the white blood cells get a closer look. And the white blood cell components, when we see differential, it'll all add up to 100%. So the components of our white blood cells in, within this differential are the neutrophils. So we got five here. So neutrophils, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, and lymphocytes. Just going to give you the general range of them. So normally, so see, I just gave you normal lab results in the third or a far right column. So if somebody, if, if it was my CBC count today, uh, my white blood cell count differential, we would see that the neutrophils are between 50 to 70% here at 61. Monocytes, four to 6%, uh, five um, is the count for this sample. One to 3% here, it's 2%. Basophils, 0.1 to up to 4%, here we see 2%. And then lymphocytes, 25 to 35, and here we see it at 30. So there's nothing wrong or out of range with this particular slide. Lab results of a um, WBC components, the differential. Now, sometimes when um, a provider orders a CBC with differential, and the white blood cell count is within normal range, that lab may actually have a policy to not continue on to do a differential. And now I'd like to show you uh, this continuum, if you will. And we have them in the order of neutrophils are on the left, and then on the far right, the lymphocytes are on the far right. And if there is an elevation of the neutrophils, also known as polymorphs, and sometimes also called granulocytes, um, if there's a higher percentage, that might be identified as a shift to the left. And you may hear providers reporting off of differential, and they'll, they, or else they'll just say uh, white blood cells elevated at 16.1 with a shift to the left. That would mean that neutrophils are elevated, and that most likely is a bacterial pathogen. Now there's a table with all of the differentials and what they could all mean, but as a general rule, let's start somewhere, as our first step to understanding what a differential could mean, if you have an elevation of neutrophils, polymorphs, granulocytes, all the same thing, if those are higher than 70%, we would identify that as a shift to the left, and it might be a bacterial pathogen. Now, what about those who had that coronavirus? Well, if we were to find that a lymphocyte count was elevated higher than 35%, that would be identified as a shift to the right, and that's likely a viral pathogen, and we don't give antibiotics for a virus. Let's do one more. So CBC with differential here, here's a client where the, uh, the uh, white blood cells were elevated. The neutrophils came back at 83.7%. The monocytes, uh, normal range, eosinophils, normal range, basophils within normal range, and the lymphocytes were low. And the reason why the lymphocytes were low is remember, this is a differential and we are all, it's all going to add up to be 100%. So it needs to take from somewhere else for those neutrophils to be taking up that high percentage count. So again, neutrophils on the left and lymphocytes on the right. 
And when we have this elevation of 83.7, which exceeds 70%, so we're high above that high range of normal by 13.7%. The heavy on the neutrophils most likely increases in neutrophils as a shift to the left and may be a bacterial pathogen. Okay, so I just want to keep this brief. I'm Nurse Murphy. Feel free to subscribe, press like, and join me again. Okay, make a nice day. Bye-bye.